And you're here in Pinky's Corner over WND broadcasting live from the Sands Casino Hotel where it's our pleasure to be with you and always invite your participation. You can call me at 344-1211. I am brought to you with the best wishes of our folks over at Chester's Plants and Flowers of Parkway Pharmacy, Boscov's Department Store, South Jersey Gas Company, and Yellow Transportation Services, to name a few of those, making it possible to spend these next two hours here in Pinky's Corner. I'd like to begin, we have a guest with us, Mr. Doug Lipp, formerly with Disney, who is now here in Atlantic City, courtesy of the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority, in running a seminar on courtesy. Mr. Lipp, if you don't mind, Doug, if you, you don't mind, sir, um, welcome, happy to have you here in Atlantic City. Uh, give us a little of your background, if you would, sir. Who is Doug Lipp? Thanks, Pinky. Well, first of all, thanks for inviting me to your show, and thanks for having me to your wonderful area here. I'm enjoying myself. I used to work at Disney in the 70s and 80s. I'm a consultant. I work with a lot of corporations around the world now on issues of leadership, global competitiveness, and, of course, on customer service. All right. How important is customer service? Of course, you have to have a good product, a good price, a good location, but if you don't have the service, it's not going to last. So it really is the essence of maintaining a strong team, meaning you have a good service approach to your employees, as well as, of course, service to your paying customers. So really, it, it is the glue that holds the whole machine together. All right, customer service encompassing what areas? Is it, is it all encompassing hospitality, manner of speech, the way of saying what you do? For example, somebody... Yesterday pointed out they walked into a restaurant and the, the waiter said, Hi, guys and gals. Glad to have you here. Yeah. Guys and gals? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, you're, not, you're not really? I don't know these folks. Exactly. It's, a, it's all of the above, as you mentioned. And one of the things that we used to talk about at Disney was that all businesses show business. And you may have a good product, but if you're grumpy... If you're moody, it's going to send a message loud and clear that you don't want people bothering you. So it's your tone of voice, it's your word choice, and it's your body language. How do we put this across? And I, you're the expert in this, and you're going to have to give us a lesson if you don't mind in it. But uh, we've tried over all these years. I know that every one of the casinos has a program. I know that most restaurants and most businesses talk with their employees and tell them, this is our pattern we'd like you to follow. How do you get them to do it? Consistency is the key, absolutely. And it is so hard to take programs and turn those into daily activities. So one of the things that I work on a lot with my client base is, first of all, hire the right people. Make sure you've got somebody with the right attitude for the job. Secondarily, train them. Prepare them well for the job. And then thirdly, lead them and manage them with the same kind of respect that you would lead your customers. Do not send a person to a training program for eight hours. Expect that to be the all-ending magic bullet and then forget about it for the next 16 years. I mentioned to you that I had been at a Ritz and I had never stayed at a Ritz hotel before down in Cancun. Uh, the vice president was down, one of their vice presidents in charge of that area was down with us and he showed me the card they had and told me that every single morning they start their day by going over this list of 10 items that they have in this of, of the courtesy and, and all the things they want their people to do. And they do it every, and that starts from the president of the hotel or the general manager meets with his vice presidents and their secretaries. And they're all there together. And they go over this and they talk about what is the goal for the day to emphasize X, Y, or Z. And that really hit me. And when I saw how it infected all of their employees, no matter where you went, there was a smile. When you asked someone where to go, where's the men's room, they walked you over to the door and said, here, sir. I mean, they didn't just say, walk down this hall and turn left. Sir, follow me, please. And while they're walking, they're talking, are you enjoying yourself? Are you having a good time? Uh, do you know about all the things? It, it was just a wonderful experience. Is that the kind of thing when you say you need to do it consistently? 
Exactly. You weave it into the fabric of your organization. It becomes part and parcel of every activity, every staff meeting. I work with some engineering companies who say that safety is a big issue in their business, and they incorporate safety tips into every single memo they send out or staff meeting. So, if, for example, in the CRDA training programs we're doing this week, we're offering handouts, booklets that have a number of activities that teams can engage in to keep these ideas of service and congeniality and leadership in the forefront of people's minds. All right, let's conduct a session, if you don't mind. You can use me as your guinea pig, and if you need one, and, and as such, but let's conduct a session for our people who are listening, because this, the, the resort industry, the tourism industry, is the number two industry in the state of New Jersey. I'm sure you, uh, Curtis and everybody here, have gone through all of this about telling you how much it means to the state of New Jersey tourism. How under Curtis Bashaw, they have now stepped in and are doing the Jersey Shore. They want to brand as one and make people aware of this business of hospitality. So, if you don't mind, uh, and, and it's, it, I keep telling people, so somebody said, well, I live 10 miles away, Pinky. I don't see many of these people. Well, someday, somebody's going to blow the horn and say, how do we get there? Or, what, where is such a thing? Or, what do you recommend? And it's the manner in which you do it that's going to set it up. So if you do not mind, let's run through a training session. Well, one of the examples I give in the, in the CRDA session is that one of the things we told our Disney employees is that Snow White can never have a bad day. And a family can plan a trip to one of our theme parks at Disney, and they spend thousands of dollars going there. And maybe the kids desperately wanted to meet Snow White, and the family drives and drives and drives. They finally get to the park, and the kids see Snow White, and they run up to her to get her autograph. And they tug on her cape, and she spins around, and she's got a cigarette dangling out of her mouth, and her wig is pushed back on her head. She says, what on earth do you kids want? I'm busy. Instantaneously, the whole theme of that trip has changed. And at that moment, the parents the grandparents and maybe 20 or 30 other guests who are watching couldn't care less that the company has spent tens of thousands of dollars prepping the park overnight to make it clean for the guests. They're upset because all of a sudden Snow White has turned into a monster. That's the kind of thing that we have to impress upon people is you can have a beautiful resort, you can have a beautiful property, great looking uniforms, but if you're surly, if you're nasty, that's what people are going to remember. It's little things. Do you have to provide for your employees or people uh, a litany of things to say that, that hand out to them and this is the way one should refer to this or respond to this in this fashion? Do it in your words, but use this as a, a, a lesson of how to do? It certainly helps to give some people examples of what you should say and how you should handle things, such as when you answer the phone or, in particular, when dealing with an upset customer. But also, it's important not to get too caught up in scripting things because then people's own personalities don't come into play. One of the things that we talked about in the CRDA training and that I see in large organizations and small that works very well is when management says something, they back it up. So, for example, if keeping a property clean is important for a golf course, a restaurant, a beachfront cabana, then the owner of that place or the management of that place is seen daily picking up trash as much as the custodial crew. As soon as I, as an hourly employee, see my boss walking off and ignoring a piece of trash, the message is clear. It's not that important. Well, I think that is something that, that you see. Whereas when you have good management, they are not afraid to bend over and pick up a piece of paper or a cigarette that is lying there. Uh, they're not afraid to, to walk up to somebody that's struggling uh, with something, maybe a piece of luggage, and say, look, let me help you. Uh, that certainly imbues uh, the spirit that you're trying to put across to the employee. Exactly. If I'm the maitre d' of the restaurant and the person busting a table is having a difficult time with something, maybe drops a dish, I'm over there immediately helping him or her clean up. I'm not above stooping down literally or figuratively to help somebody out. All right. How do you set up the program that you give to, to these? For example, today you gave a program at the Boardwalk Hall. What are the things that you talked about? Well, a lot of the things, Pinky, that we've already touched upon in this program of hiring the right pre people and then training them appropriately. Right. Then let's take it for those persons who are looking to get hired. What, do they, what should they be doing in order to catch the eye? You know, they got 10 applicants coming before you. 
and there are ten of us, nine lined up behind me. What are you looking for? And what do I have to do to try to catch your eye and make you realize I would be the best employee you could hire? The greatest way to catch somebody's eye is to demonstrate behaviorally your energy and your consistency. So ideally, if I was an applicant, I would ask the employer or the prospective employer to throw challenges my way. Come to me as an upset customer and let me handle this on the spot so I can demonstrate to you beyond the mundane interview questions how I would handle a tough situation. Most of us are fine in, in regular, uh, non-confrontational situations when everything goes according to script, but I'd like to show off to you how I can handle the tough situation day after day. And that certainly is going to catch his eye. It's going to catch every employee's eye because you want to hire the people that have the great attitude who can handle the tough customer because, quite frankly, that's one of the biggest complaints I get from employees around the country is how do I deal with those tough customers day in and day out? All right. How do you deal? You have the right attitude. You don't let them get under your skin. If nothing else, you realize I'm not going to let them bring me down. In fact, at Disneyland, we had a sign in the front of the park that said the happiest place on earth. And quite frankly, there were plenty of customers who I was convinced were coming in to make it the most miserable place on earth. But if I, as a service provider, let them bring me down, then it's going to make for a very long season. I have found here, and I've been doing this a long time, um, I have found here that treating them with kindness is a way it just takes the, the wind out of their sails. When you soften your voice, I had a teacher that taught me this at one time. Whenever the kids were louder, his voice would become softer. When we were standing in line to go to a physical education program, his voice would go softer and, and you couldn't hear what he was saying in, in order to hear him because every once in a while he'd say, well, if you fellas are right, then I'm going to let you go early today. You can go home early and have yourself a good time. And the kid said, well, wait a minute, what did you say? He said, well, you're all going to have to stay later because you didn't hear what I said. So that, that got me to the point of saying, okay, when somebody starts to yell, you don't yell back. Right. You soften. You soften your voice and give them the smile. And they look at you. I, I had a youngster one day call my show and started to use four-letter words. It was at a time before we had a, a cutoff thing, and I just stopped them. And I took him off the air, and he's still on the phone with me, and he's calling me, he's spoiling words. I said, thank you so much. I know you love my show, and that's very nice of you. He's going, do you know what I'm saying to you? Do you know? I said, yes, I do, and I really appreciate it. He just blew away. Couldn't take the fact that exactly. there was kindness coming out, and he wanted to match up with that. And I think that's one of the issues that you raised. Well, you mentioned your experience at the Ritz. And one of the things that we talked about so far this week in the CRDA programs and we'll continue to talk about tomorrow and Friday is the importance of having ongoing opportunities for your employees to practice dealing with upset customers. In fact, there are some case studies or some little role plays that we'll have people participate in. And I see in the teams where I work, where I go as a customer, the ones that always rise above the challenge are the ones that involve their employees in weekly or daily discussions of how do you handle the tough situation. And they actually get up and practice it in front of each other. So when the real time comes, when you're dealing with someone on the phone or face-to-face, -face, it's second nature. You don't have to wring your hands and wonder, how do I handle this crazy customer right now? So in actuality, the good thing to do is play roles. Play roles, and one of the things that we often see in these training programs is employers saying, how do I keep good staff? Well, first of all, you hire the right people, and secondarily, you train them and get them prepped and treat them as carefully as you would treat a customer, and they'll come back season after season. And I think it, it, the thing that gets me in you saying that is that they become a part of it rather than being a separate entity. They don't feel included. Exactly. And I guess that is a major role. Exactly. For particularly large corporations or large businesses like casinos when you have six or 7,000 employees. Exactly. So You hold your middle management accountable for the turnover that they're creating because that turnover is how they're treating their internal customers. And I don't care how technically competent a middle manager is, if she or he has tremendously high turnover, they're doing something wrong and they need to be helped out or changed. All right. We're going to open up the questions for those of you at home. If you would like to question Mr. Doug Lip, formerly of Disney and now worldwide traveler and teaching people about customer services and a number of other areas that deal with businesses. Our telephone number, 344-1211.
Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. Hi, Pinky. I'm wondering about the efficacy of training the frontline employees because in most cases up and down the coast, they're not professional. They're here for the summer. They really don't care about tourism in New Jersey. They just like to get through to August when their grandmother dies and they can go home a week early. All right, thank you. It's a good point. And this happens in the Jersey Shore where people come in at the very places where children go, the rides. They hire college kids. They hire high school kids, and they're only there for that summer. Some of them will leave early uh, and leave you stuck at the end of the year. How do you handle those? Well, that's a really good point, and I think that the first step is making sure that you don't just hire warm bodies to fill the open positions on your team, and that's something that is a but challenge. But that's hard to say. It's very hard. When you have a business yep. and you need people, yep. and it's very difficult finding people. Exactly. But if you hire a person who inherently does not buy into your business philosophy or isn't wired for the kind of job you expect him or her to do for the season, they will wind up causing much more problem, much more anxiety in your team than you could ever imagine. So I would rather go without a key position filled for a few extra days just to make sure that I screen people to make sure they're the right person for the job. Once they're on board, I make sure they are prepped before I send them out to the front lines, before they get burned out by a few challenging customer scenarios, and they throw their hands up and say, I got better things to do. This is no fun for me. See you later. Bye. Then you're hung to dry. Hi there. You're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. How you doing, Pinky and Mr. Lip? Yes, ma'am. I've been, been in the courtesy casino business for years of my life, and I've always found a lot of things that I felt were wrong, but, but I happen to live here in Atlantic City. And I knew every, uh, uh, the whole city where things were located. But I had a, a very bad experience just last week. Now, uh, gamblers have, they have an awful lot of superstitious things. And one is they do not like $50 bills. And uh, casinos are considered bad luck, like a $2 bill. So unfortunately, somebody had paid me something and they gave me two $50 bills. So I go to the cashier, and I, I was going to gamble, and I said, would you please cash these $50 bills? And he said, why? And I thought, why do I have to give, I give you an explanation why I want change? I'm going to be spending my money. So he gave me a dirty look, and he finally gave them to me. Then I go up to eat, and I could see it was, I, I sat down and had my breakfast. I brought a book with me. And I knew I must have waited a half hour. And yet the, the waiter was very nice, the busboy. They kept coming over, did I want more coffee? Did I want more water? And I could see that the problem was the kitchen. And people don't realize that when they go in the restaurant, it's not the waitress's fault all the time. It's that they're short of help in the kitchen and not getting the food out. And yet the waitress takes the blunt of it. I mean, I. Okay. didn't have anything to do, so I just sat and read. But I heard people complaining terribly. Thank That's you. That's all I had to say. Thank you very much. On the first issue she raised. First of all, uh, whether something is a, a good luck or a bad luck omen, if you're in a position where you're going to be handling money and certain bills are good or bad luck, that should be part and parcel to any training program. Anybody should know that. When I work with cross-cultural situations, people who work with Chinese know that number eight is good luck. So that would be, to me, a common sense miss that those, uh, those cashiers didn't find out about or their leadership didn't train them. Secondarily, you're absolutely right, ma'am. The frontline people always bear the brunt of what's going on backstage. And one of the things to consider with any company is to make sure that the frontline people and the backline people, front of the house, back of the house, have opportunities to walk in each other's shoes so they see the relative pressures that both jobs hold so they have more interdepartmental and intradepartmental support and empathy as opposed to saying, all oh, those losers out there in the front of the house, they'll take care of my problems. For 29 minutes past the hour of 4 p.m., you're in Pinky's Corner broadcasting live from the Sands Casino Hotel. Doug Lip is my guest. Mr. Lip has been hired by the CRDA to come to the area and traveling up and down the coastline of the Jersey Shore and teaching people about customer services, and that's what it's all about. If you have any questions, it's your opportunity to pose them. 
Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner over WND. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Pinky. Good afternoon, Doug. I was around the casino industry for a while as a waiter. I worked in one of the prominent delis down here for two years, and as a banquet waiter for a number of years. And getting in with management a lot in the situations, I think a big problem with the casino industry is that they're hiring people that don't know how to handle people. That they don't properly know how to handle the employees of the casino and treat them with respect. Everybody wants a certain amount of respect. They can put a person on the carpet for what they do wrong, but you can also compliment them when they do something right. Uh, I worked as a banquet, and you got a chance to meet many, many, many different types of people, the high rollers to the low rollers to the birthday party people and everything. Okay. And I found courtesy goes a long way, and that's one of the biggest things that they lack. Thank you. That's a great point. I think courtesy internally is, is vitally important. And for some reason, when some people are promoted to supervisor or manager, all of a sudden they think that their sole purpose in life is to find what people are doing wrong, as opposed to going throughout the organization and complimenting people when they do things right. Great point, sir. And we'd like to tell you, good friends, about the folks over at Chester's Plants and Flowers. I stopped by there yesterday to pick up a basket of flowers. Absolutely magnificent. The variety of flowers that were in this arrangement, just magnificent. They're located at Iowa and Arctic Avenues in Atlantic City. They also have floral arrangements for you down at Castle Supermarket in Margate. Call them at 345-9266. They do deliver not only on the island, but they deliver on the mainland as well. Floral arrangements for any and all occasion. And they do them so beautiful. And don't forget, Sunday is Father's Day. Fathers would love to receive flowers. Send them roses. You'd be surprised. That happened one year. Almost fell off my seat. But it was a great treat to have flowers sent. I'd never had it done before. So I want to tell you, friends, when it comes, it is a great surprise. And Dad will be thrilled to so stop in. Or call them at 345-9266. Flowers from Chester's Plants and Flowers, Iowa and Arctic Avenues in Atlantic City. And we tell you about the Parkway Pharmacy located at Brighton and Atlantic Avenues in Atlantic City. The Parkway Pharmacy can be reached by calling 345-5105. They do deliver prescriptions on Absecon Island. They're the only independently owned and operated pharmacy on the island. Is there a difference between the major corporation and the mom and pop pharmacy absolutely they care about the folks they have the same folks working for them been working for them for many years and they take such good care of their clientele so do as i and many people are doing they're using the parkway pharmacy brighton and atlantic avenues in atlantic city call them at 345-5105 and we suggest that you visit boscov's department store in the shore mall Boscov's independently owned and operated. Here again, 70 units around the northeastern part of the country. And the one that's located in Egg Harbor Township is among the top 10 grossing. And this is in an area where there are many big department stores, name brand department stores, national chains around the country that are here. Boscov continues to do business because they take care of their clientele. They have great sales for you and you appreciate dealing with them. They care about the way they take care of you. I was with Mr. Boscov walking through the store one day, and when he saw something that was out of line, he didn't tell the salesperson to fix it. He walked over and said, look, this is the way we'd like it to be, and he showed it to her and said, I hope you will do that in the future. She said, oh, yes, Mr. Boscov, we certainly will. That's the kind of spirit that they have in leading, and that's what you get when you visit Boscov's department store in the Shore Mall. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner over at WND. Good afternoon. Good evening, Pinky. Uh, good evening, Doug. Uh, I've probably worked in the casino industry for probably half my life, and I worked for two companies. The one company that I worked for totally dedicated their time to, to actually uh, train the employee about customer service, and they made, the, they made the employee feel like an employee, not a number. The company I work for now is just totally the opposite, and you can actually see that the customer service is not working. So, I mean, it's, it's really up to the company and management to weed out a good employee and train them properly 
And you, I mean, in that money they invest to train you, carry that a long way. Thank you very much, Doug. Real good point. In fact, there is a, uh, a great book called From Good to Great. And in there, the author, Jim Collins, talks about the best leaders in the world are the ones who look in the mirror when things are going wrong in the company because they realize their leadership has fallen. Conversely, when things go well in an organization, the best leaders are the ones that look out the window to the whole team and congratulate them. So your point is well taken. Thank you. 344-1211, our telephone number if you'd like to question Doug Lip who was here with us traveling with the folks from the CRDA up and down the Jersey coast, you have that opportunity to do it. 344-1211. You are in Pinky's Corner from the Sands with Doug Lip. Pinky, Doug, how you doing? Yes, sir. Uh, a couple years ago, there's a very practical uh, reason for, for practicing. A couple years ago, I was in Las Vegas, I read the air, and got treated along with a couple other people rudely by beverage server of breakfast, let's say. And I got back to uh, home here, got a letter about a week afterwards from the vice president saying, how was your trip? How did you, what did you think of the Riviera? So I wrote back to him exactly what I thought about it. He replied, again, the same vice president, sent the, the letter, giving me a comp, giving me a comp for meals for three days a day at the Riviera. Now, I guarantee you, that guy that I mentioned heard about that for two reasons. First of all, he got an irate letter from a customer, and I cost the company money. It cost them money to have me stay there for three days. Okay. So Th there's, there's a good reason to, uh, to do it to save your butt. Thank you. Nope. It's great when upper management gets involved in frontline issues like that and they see the bottom line cost of poor service. People should be held accountable, whether they're executive level, middle management level, or frontline level. And by them responding to your letter that way showed me, and I'm sure it showed you, that they cared about service. And as you say, it cost them a whole lot of money just for that few seconds of rudeness on the part of that server that morning. Great point. So now how do they take this? and use it. What do they do? Do they go back with their people and say, look, here are uh, letters that I received and we have to be able to stop something like this? A great point. In fact, at Disney, one of the things that we did in our weekly newsletter to employees was to include four or five letters like this that would be complimentary and four or five that would be absolutely scathing. And we then, in the training department, would go out and talk to all the different departments, make sure that the employees had been duly trained. And if they hadn't, then we made sure to let them know what the expectations were because it's too easy to beat up on the frontline employee thinking they should know better. And amazingly, a lot of them don't. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner over WND from the Sands. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pinky. Yes, sir. Yeah, only thing you have to say, just go, you know, they see people upset going to work. Only the time you see them smiling when they out of work. All the employees of the casinos, just look. When the employer entering, they're all miserable when they go to work. Only the time you see a smile out of when they're coming out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and that's a good point. That smile on the face. <laughs> Is, is such a key. It, it opens the door. We all know that actions speak louder than words, and if you're smiling, that takes care of a lot of the anxiety, both of the employee as well as the, the customer who's coming into contact with you. Hi there. You're in Pinky's Corner over at WND. Good afternoon. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what is the solution for an employer who has many employees who have no command of the English language? All right. Can hang up and listen. Thank you, Doug. That's a big problem, and I'm sure it's all over the country. One of the things I mentioned in the training program is how our population has indeed changed. In fact, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Changing Face of Today's Customer, in which our population of 300 million people is now about 17% made up of immigrants. And I know that in the, on the Jersey Shore you have a lot of younger employees who may have come from the former Soviet bloc, people that don't speak English as well. And you should absolutely make sure that in the interview process, you assess their English ability and make sure that if they are going to come into contact directly with customers, they at least have enough ability to speak to take care of the basic customer needs. If they're going to be in a position where there could be potential safety issues or you've got a call on different language abilities, make sure that they can handle that. And thirdly, you can always provide opportunities to train them in certain English skills. You can have internal 
brown bag lunch sessions where you're focusing on language. A number of junior colleges are very happy to provide ESL programs, English as a Second Language, to help folks out. But make sure that you're hiring people that have the basic skills that you need. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. Yes, uh, Doug, I just have a couple of questions for you. Uh, one is, what is, what is the plan or your intent of, what do you attempt to accomplish uh, by doing what you're doing? Two is, how will Pinky be able to know when he goes into the casinos that the program is working? Number three is, how, what do we have in there for continuity? Okay, great and how, point. And last one is, how long will this program last? Thank you. Good points. All oh, those questions are all too easy. That's <laughs> those are absolutely the, the, the base questions that everybody should be willing to ask, and they're the toughest ones to answer. My goal and CRDA's goal in this five days and ten sessions is to raise the awareness of everybody. This by no means is the all-ending panacea. Two hours is by no means going to ensure a successful three months. It's got to be continued, as we've already talked about in the program. Our hope is that in the next two days, we have four more sessions, involve another 2,000 people or so, so they too can see the benefits of great service, the downfall of not providing great service, both with your employees as well as with your customers. And hopefully when Pinky walks into a number of properties, I imagine he's got an edge that a lot of us don't have because he's so recognizable, but hopefully if he was to walk into a property where they didn't know him, they would greet him upon entering and say thank you for coming as he leaves the property. And the, the point of continuance, that is, that is a major factor. I pointed out to you in the very beginning, I told Doug that we have not had a program like this since way back when the casinos first opened. When Murray Rafel, one of our local people who was very good at running these types of programs, gave a program 28 years ago at resorts. There has not been a community program of this nature since that time. And I point out that every casino and almost every business has a program for their new employees. But I think the major point, and that's what I'm leading to in telling about it, is continuance. There was no continuance from when it first started. What needs to be done when Doug Lip leaves? The what challenge, needs to be yeah. done and what, how often does it need to be done? The challenge is when you use the word program because that necessarily means a definite beginning and end. And that can be a, a starting point for an organization, but as the example with the Ritz-Carlton, as the example with dealing with challenging customers, on a daily basis we have to remind ourselves and our teams what we are there for. What are the things that we messed up on the day before and how are we going to minimize those? What is our goal for this day or this shift and what are we going to do to make sure that we get that done? I have to share with you one of the, one of the sacred cows that we had at Disney was that every employee had to have at least an orientation before being sent into specific training in their area. And even if they'd been with the company for the past four seasons and they were returning, they still had to go through eight to ten hours of orientation before being sent back into the workforce. And sometimes I, as the head of that training department, would get calls from senior people trying to push me and say, hey, do me a favor and exempt them from training for the next six weeks until things calm down, and then you can have them back. And I'd always say nicely, no can do. And usually that was the end of the discussion. But sometimes a senior executive doesn't, doesn't like to hear the answer no, and they would call my vice president. And what my vice president did was fantastic. She had two questions for the person. First question is, have you talked with Doug yet? Of course, she knew they had. And then her second question was, why are you bothering me? You've already got an answer. That was continuity. That took it beyond a program and wove it into the fabric of our organization. And if you can't do what the Ritz does and do it every morning, I think what is necessary is that it be done on a regular basis, whether it's on weekly, that the people working in that particular restaurant or the people that are uh, working in room service, whatever it may be, that has to be done regularly. Jets can't be done the first day and they never hear about it Exactly. until whenever. You can put notices on break boards. You can have a quick stand-up meeting before a shift starts or just after it starts. Five minutes at the beginning of shift can make a huge difference in how employees approach their job every single day. And I think it also helps the team aspect of it. Exactly. Hi, you're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. Yes, hi Pinky and hi Doug. I was the recipient of your seminar yesterday in Ocean City and it was very helpful and I just appreciated uh, all that you taught and 
when you were talking about dealing with challenging people, it just uh, rang so true when someone has to wait a long time just to acknowledge that, you know, thank you for waiting. And some advice I want to get from you on one of the problems we have here at the Jersey Shore is the traffic congestion. And when you're trying to get across those side streets and people run stop signs, and how can we be more friendly with our driving and getting people to uh, not be in such a hurry or any advice? Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> Honest man. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Get wider streets. I don't know. <laughs> Hi there. You're in Pinky's Corner over WND. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Kravitz. Yes, ma'am. And to your guests. Yes. And another thing in the workforce, uh, sir, I have learned, and I'm, I deal with the public daily, has been doing it for 30 years now. And I found out whatever happens... You know, we all have problems. Whatever happened at home, you don't take it to the job and take an attitude out toward your co-workers and to the people you're working with. You leave that out. They have nothing to do with that. You go in with an open mind and a positive mind to give the best service to the customers that you can give that day. But taking frustrations in, maybe you were late getting the work, Maybe something that one of the kids did something wrong. Going into your co-workers and you have an attitude, is that's not right. Because they are not responsible for what has taken place at the home front. Thank you. That's a great point. One of the things that we talked about at Disney all the time was the concept that you're bringing up, ma'am, and that's when are you on stage and when are you off stage. And when you are off stage in your private break room or in your home, then you can let your hair down and relax. When you are on stage, that is not the time to complain and moan and gripe in front of coworkers and customers that you had a tough drive in or the vet messed up your dog's leg operation. You've got to know when the curtains are opening and the lights are on. Sometimes that means driving a company car. You're on stage on the interstate and you've got a logo on the side of your car. People connect you with that property. You're on stage even when you're driving down the turnpike. So you've got to be really clear when you're on and when you're off stage. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. Yes, hello. I, uh, I don't presume to tell the gentleman how to handle his uh, uh, project, but I say the only way that that project is going to work is that the city gets behind them, and it's a citywide situation where uh, uh, we have that they that they go and promote, you know, uh, a positive uh, uh, attitude and a friendly attitude in the whole city. I think well, if they could do that, then uh, then I would see that it would carry on not only to, for the casinos, but then to the rest of the stores, to the boardwalk, and everything else. And they should have that, and it should be a, a summer thing. Thank you. you. Know? It, it's it's I guess it's just like the wheel. You pull out one spoke, that wheel's liable to fall apart. Just one spoke. Yeah. So every spoke has to be a part of it. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the whole chain of service. And the, the municipalities have shown tremendous support this week in attending and having their employees attend the, the programs. But like you say, it's got to be a, the whole package. It's got to be the casino management. It's got to be the frontline employees. It's got to be the owner of the crab shack or of the restaurant. It can't just be one or two people trying to push this rope up a hill because it's not going to happen unless everybody's pulling together. And it's got to be government employees. It's got to be the people in City Hall. It's got to be the police department, the fire department, the sanitation workers who in the morning take your trash and throw it in and not have to bang it around and make extra noise to wake people up because they're more considerate. Exactly. Those the, kind of things. The toll takers on the interstate, they are the first or last impression that many guests get when they're coming into the New Jersey Shore, and they are like a doorway. And if they are rude or surly, it sets the tone. If they're nice and friendly, it sets a tone. It's everybody. Hi there. You're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. Hey, hey. Yes. Hello, Slow. Yes, Slow. How are you, sir? Good. Nice to have you. Nice to have you, sir. As you well remember, I was the vice president of the showboat in the human resources and have to compliment the general. All of our uh, key people in human resources were uh, graduates of the Disney Institute and it fostered that kind of a thing at the showboat. And one of the things that we found was very effective was a rule which they're now calling the platinum rule. It used to be the golden rule, do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Platinum Rule takes that up a step and says, do unto others as they would have you do unto them, not what you want them, not your products and services. It's what they're looking for. Now, you can't always do it. But as this gentleman says, you try your very best 
try to provide that kind of service. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner over at WND. Good afternoon. Hi, Pinky. Hi, Doug. I agree with what Lottie said. It absolutely, you owe it to yourself to treat people like you want to be treated. I mean, of course, I mean, we have to look at doctors, police, pilots, everybody. You, ha you could have a bad day, but you have to put that aside. You have to remember. I mean, I've done so many flights where I wasn't, but people are looking for you, safety and comfort. And, and, and you owe it to yourself, and you owe it to your patrons to put things away at home and act like a professional. So I, I really, I understand what you're saying, Doug. I just hope it really catches on here in Atlantic City. Thank you. Great point. Thank you. I think that one point that you really mentioned that I think is tremendous is you owe it to yourself. If nothing else, if you give good service to a coworker, a subordinate, or a customer, that joy of attention that you provide will come back and buoy you up, and it will get you more energy than you could ever imagine. So do it for selfish reasons, if nothing else. Hi there. You're in Pinky's Corner on WND. Good afternoon. Hello, gentlemen. Yes. Listen, uh, got a good government job for you. I forgot the gentleman's name on your show here. Mr. Lip. Maybe you can teach that guy that the Jewish Bush wants to send there running to you. You're in Pinky's Corner over WND. You know, how insensitive can you be? I'd like to tell you, good friends, about some of the folks making it possible for me to be here with you, and that's Yellow Transportation Services that provide the yellow band that will take you from your home to Atlantic City's International Airport. You call them at 344-1221. 344-1221. They'll tell you exactly what it's going to cost, whether there's one or nine in the van. They come right to your door, pick up your luggage, put it in the van, take you carefully, right out to the Atlantic City International Airport, take your luggage out, and you're ready to go. When you return, that van is waiting right there. And if your plane is wait, late, they're still waiting for you. 344-1221, the telephone number to call to make your reservation. And they also have the yellow cab. Yellow cab servicing Atlantic City. Remember, they do have a meter. The meter will run. And you will pay what the meter has what it says up until eight dollars it will not go any higher than eight dollars whether there's one or four of you in the cab it is still no more than eight dollars anywhere within atlantic city again call 344-1221 to make the cab come to your home pick you up and go wherever it is you want within the city limits no more than eight dollars 344-1221 and we also want to tell you, good friends, about Lexus Atlantic City because Lexus Atlantic City has the only luxury hybrid that there is in the nation today. That is the Lexus 400, RX 400H. It has taken advantage of the use of a V6 gasoline engine and a pair of electric drive motors. You will now get 31 miles to the gallon with that RH400XH, 31 miles to the gallon, 27 on the road. You get better in the city than on the road because you're using more electric power within the city in the stop-and-go traffic. Stop in to Lexus Atlantic City on Fire Road in Egg Harbor Township. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner on WND. Good afternoon. Yes, hi. I worked at the casino, and when I worked there, I worked security, and I worked in a cocktail lounge. Now, the cocktail lounge, two steps, you would have been in the casino. But my job was, you know, you can't walk in with your drink. Now, there's a guy that lost all his money, and he says to me, had his drink. I said, sir, I'm sorry, you cannot walk in to the casino with your drink. He said to me, he looked like a gorilla, and he says, what are you going to do about it? I said, sir, go right through. And that was it. But I had a right to protect myself, too. Okay. Okay. Contingency plans, what do you do when things go awry? And that's a tremendously important topic to discuss with your employees, especially where security and safety are involved. And every employee should know when they can pass off the problem to somebody else and how they do it. It doesn't mean that just because somebody's big and mean and ugly, you let them get away with everything. But certainly, you don't put yourself in the way of uh, a bulldozer. What are the backup plans that the company has so that you don't have to take this on by yourself. Hi there, you're in Pinky's Corner with Doug Lip. Good afternoon, Pinky, and to your guests. 
Go right ahead. Yes, thank you. I was listening to uh, your, your guest, and uh, I was listening to that lady, and I kind of agree with her, because uh, I think uh, courtesy starts at the top. And uh, when you go into your job, and some of your uh, supervisors and, and um, management, when they speak to you and say good morning, it gives you a feeling that you feel good about yourself and that you're re ready to welcome the guest or whoever is involved. But in many times, you have people that, that you work with that are over you, supervisory or management, that walk by you, will not say a word to you, will not speak to you when you, um, um, and, and this, it, it, and a lot of young people, they don't know how to react. So maybe sometimes um, it's not always uh, quite natural. You want, in this uh, industry, you want people to be courteous and uh, employees. But at the same time, you run into a lot of guests that do not know how to respect you, do not know how to talk to you. And a lot of them, when you speak English to them, they all of a sudden, if you're trying to direct them or tell them something, all of a sudden they've been talking English to you, and then when you're trying to give them the correct answers, they uh, say they don't understand you. You have a confrontation, more or less, that they don't like you, and you wind up the, the employee. All right. Thank you. So maybe your guests can tell us how okay. you would react in that way. Good point. Doug? I think you're right on. I love it. Your, your, your concept of good morning good afternoon simple salutations has been forgotten by so many people and it is so easy to do some of the best organizations in the world actually incorporate that into their daily staff meetings let's remember folks to go out there and say good morning to our staff to our team and to our customers i work a lot with the pebble beach company in monterey california and they have every staff member every person who cleans rooms cleans bathrooms if you're walking down the hallway as a guest in the hotel and you see those carts out in the hallway where the, the maids are cleaning up the rooms, they will look at you and say, good morning. That is fantastic to be recognized. Your second point, if you say good morning to somebody as a guest and they say, what's good about it, just let it be water off a duck's back. Don't take it personally. If they're going to have a bad day, let them have a bad day, but you're not going to be the cause of it. My answer to it is that we're here. <laughs> exactly. We're vertical. And we're here. Choice. <laughs> that, that's, that's the whole key when they say, you know, what's good about it? I'm here. <laughs> Go from there. Hi, you're in Pinky's Corner over WND with Doug Lib. Hello. Hi. Yes, go ahead. Um, I was an attendee this morning at the seminar. Yes. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Um, I just have a question to uh, Mr. Lip. Go ahead. Uh, my question is, can I understand, even though you, you can dwell a lot on it, but I understood you to say that if my employer treats me like I'm number one, that I in turn will treat the customer as number one? I mentioned exactly that, that employers should treat their staff with incredible respect, and then the odds are much greater that the employee will turn around and treat the customer with respect. Okay, Cause I, cause, because I, I totally believe that, that if an employer uh, you know, puts his employees first and treats them as their number one, uh, then I in turn will be able to treat my customers or the customers and clients as number one. Okay. So you confirm what I, what I personally believe. I also, I also said, however, that if I have a boss who is mean and nasty, it doesn't mean that that gives me carte blanche to go out and be mean to people. I should take control of my own emotions as a frontline employee and not let my boss get me down. Okay, I, I agree with that. And by the way, your opening skit was beautiful. Thanks. We'll keep that a secret. Thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate your call. Uh, we're going to keep Doug for a few minutes. It's been interesting hearing your comments. And uh, because of the number of you who have called, we figure there's some more that want to get in. So if you don't mind, Doug, all right, we'll be able to keep Doug Lip here with us on the other side of our news break. Just stay right where you are. And we can also tell you about Kibbutz down the shore. Oh, Doug, that's a place you would love. You love the Jewish delis? You like that corned beef, coleslaw, and Russian dressing? The gigantic sandwich? They have it in Ocean City at 9th and Central Avenue. It's called Kibitz Down the Shore. The pastrami, the corned beef, the wonderful matzo balls, and all the other wonderful delicacies that people enjoy when they visit a Jewish deli. So come and enjoy it. Ron and the staff are there to be of service. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they even have ham and eggs for you if that's what you want. But they've got the wonderful, tasty items 
from the Jewish Deli available for you. And they also cater to home parties. So you're having an office party, having a birthday party as such, they'll do it. And they have marvelous desserts. Come visit Kibitz Down the Shore, 9th and Central Avenue in Ocean City. We're breaking for the latest national and local news. We'll be right back in Pinky's Corner from the Sands.